A very good evening to all who have tuned in to hear the message this evening. You're very, very welcome to listen to the simple gospel message. And we're here in connection with the believers who meet in the Gospel Hall in Limavady, County Derry, Northern Ireland. You're very, very welcome to listen to what the message is all about. And just before we read a verse from the Bible, we want to have a, just a very brief word of prayer that God will bless his word to all who have come today. Father, we give thanks for this beautiful day that thou hast given to us. And here we are, people that acknowledge the God of heaven and desire that others will hear the gospel of the grace of God. And we thank thee for the opportunity to tell others of the Saviour that we have found, the one who left heaven and came to earth to die on an only cross, was buried and rose again the third day, and lives today in the power of an indissoluble life. We thank thee for the opportunity to tell men and women and boys and girls all about the Saviour. And we do ask for thy help for a short time as we open the scriptures together, say a few things and desire salvation for those who are without the Saviour. Receive thanks for meeting our every need another day and for health and strength and soundness of mind when others are far away from these things. We give thanks in his worthy name. Amen. I want to read one verse today from the Holy Scriptures of Truth. And I would like to apply it to the journey of life. And so I read you Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse number 6. These are the words of the king in the land of Persia, in the palace there at Shushan. And he's addressing his cupbearer, a man called Nehemiah. And in answer to what Nehemiah was saying, he asks two questions. For how long shall thy journey be, and when wilt thou return? For how long shall thy journey be, and when wilt thou return? I would like to use this this afternoon and evening to just illustrate the journey of life that you and I are on so that you might understand a little about these two questions, 12 words of the English language. We've got to tell you a little about the background of this particular uh, section of the Word of God. We're in Shushan, the palace, as we have indicated, in the land of Persia, and the cupbearer for the king had a very important job, and he was a man called Nehemiah, and he was often uh, before the king in his presence. And on this day, his countenance was fallen, and the king wondered what it was all about. And so he asked him, Nehemiah, what's the problem today? You seem downcast. And Nehemiah answered, Well, I would like to make a journey to my homeland, the land of Israel, that lies 800 miles west of where he was located on this occasion. And so the king, in answer to Nehemiah's observations, he asked the question, For how long shall thy journey be, and when wilt thou return? We would like to take that out of its setting and apply it in the gospel to all of us this afternoon and evening. You see, you and I started the journey of life when we were born into this world. And the Bible tells us that you and I are sons and daughters of Adam. And he was the first man created in the Garden of Eden. And God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, that he would live forever. And yet one day he disobeyed God, and sin entered into the world, 
And that's what the Bible says, you and I are included, even though we weren't living at that time. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death has passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And the message that we want to bring to all of us on the journey of life, that whenever each of us started, we started as sinners. We can't, couldn't help that. That's what the Bible says. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And you see, Adam lived in this life for 930 years. But the day came when he died. And so you and I are here for a short time. And we want to make absolutely sure that everybody knows as we move on the journey of life that all of us started wrong. The whole human race, right from Cain down to this present day, and until the last person is born in years ahead in this life. Please stop and consider what we're asking today. And you know, it's a very wholesome question to think about. For how long shall thy journey be all around us with this pandemic that has hit every country in the world and the political arena that's taking place in Europe this evening tells us that the journey of life is not here forever. See, the Bible tells us that the oldest man that ever lived was named was Methuselah. He lived 969 years in this life and he died. The youngest infant that we read about was King David's son. King David's son. He was only a few days old and he passed into eternity. In between these two examples, you and I are living our life. Nobody knows how long it will be. And you see, the question is asked, what is your life? It is even a vapour that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. Another passage says, time is short. Another verse says, we spend our years as a tale that is told. So please consider what we're saying today, because... None of us know how long we will be in this life, but we need to tell you what the Bible teaches, that if we're here for a short or for a long time, we need to prepare for the world that's coming, and the Bible calls it eternity, and that's what the gospel message is all about. And so we would like to bring to you the journey that the Lord Jesus Christ undertook from the highest place in heaven, adored by all the sons of flame, yet such his self-denied love, he laid aside his crown and came, and he came into the earth, and the Bible tells us, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. The day came when he entered into the human family sin apart, and he lived in this life for 33 and a half years. And we want to tell you today, all of us on the journey of life, that God had a plan. Even though man sinned against God, it says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so God's plan, we often uh, think, uh, think about it and sing about it. A wondrous grace that found a plan to rescue guilty fallen man and ease him of his load. Found a ransom in his son to save the sinner lost, undone, and meet the claims of God. And so the day came out of the ivory palaces into a world of woe. Only his great eternal love made my Saviour go. 
We're glad here to tell you that there's a way back to God from the dark paths of sin. There's a door that is open, and you may go in. At Calvary's cross is where you begin when you come as a sinner to Jesus. The Lord told a man one day in Luke chapter 10 that he was called the Samaritan. It was himself, and he left the city of Jerusalem in that high elevation, and he journeyed to Jericho, the city of the curse. And on the way down, he saw a man wounded on the roadside, half dead. And he stopped there to take care of him and meet his need. That illustrates for us what the Lord Jesus Christ did after 33 odd years in this life. When he went about doing good and journeying in the land of Israel for many days, he arrived finally at Golgotha, the place outside Jerusalem's city walls in the land of Israel, when he died the center cross, three crosses standing side by side of broken law assigned. Two for their own transgressions died, the middle one for mine. We have come to tell you that the Lord Jesus Christ he hung for six long lonely hours on that lonely cross outside the walls of the old city Jerusalem. And we cannot understand it, we cannot analyze it, but we accept it. That he was the one that on the tree died for guilty sinners. That's what the Bible says. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And he came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We may not know, we cannot tell what pains he had to bear, but we believe it was for us. He hung and suffered there, and so in those lonely hours God made to meet upon him the iniquity of us all. Behold the Lamb of God, which beareth away the sin of the world. His sufferings were severe. He died that we might live. While I suffer thy terrors, he said, I am distracted. Please stop on your onward way on the journey of life and ask yourself a simple question. Why was he there as the bearer of sin? If on Jesus my guilt was not laid, and why from his side flowed the sin-cleansing tide? If his died, my debt had not paid. We have come to tell you that when every scripture was fulfilled regarding his death, he cried at the end of the six hours, It is finished. The work of redemption was complete, and the throne of God outraged by sin was absolutely satisfied. And on the third day after he was buried, he rose from among the dead, and in resurrection on the first day of the week, he later ascended to heaven, and he's there today, and he lives in the power of an indissoluble life, and he's interested in you and I as we make our journey through life. Would you not stop then today and think of that one who took your place as your substitute died in your stead, that you might live forevermore. His love is more than tongue can tell. The love that Jesus had for me to suffer on the cruel tree, that I a ransomed soul might be, is more than tongue can tell. Please accept him today as your Savior and substitute, and meet us in heaven when life is over. There's another group today that live in the different countries of the world, and they are Christians, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. They started that day when they were born again, when they passed from death unto life, and they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, as we desire you should do today. 
if you're still in your sins. And you know, they're a group, and they're very, very interested to tell others of the Savior that they have found. And that's why we have come here today. And one of the great examples is the, the great Apostle Paul, a mighty preacher and teacher in the apostolic age of the New Testament. And one day he was saved on the Damascus road out of Jerusalem. And he said to the Lord, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And from that day forward he told others of the Saviour that he had found, travelled and journeyed many, many miles for years. And then his life was terminated through martyrdom. And here we are, sinners saved by grace, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're urging you today to trust the Lord Jesus Christ before you terminate life and move into eternity. And you know, when we leave this life, we will never return. That's what our questions are saying. For how long shall thy journey be? And when wilt thou return? Once we leave, we'll never be back. And we'll leave and go into eternity. And if you're a saved person today, and know Christ as your personal eternal Savior, you will be in heaven with Christ forevermore. However, if you leave this life the way you were born, and never trust the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ said so carefully more than once in the New Testament, if you die in your sins where I am, you cannot come. He's in heaven today, and if you die in your sins, you'll never be there, but you'll be in hell, and finally the lake of fire for the ages of the ages. Oh, please take this opportunity to stop and thank the God of heaven for ever sending his son to die for you and me as poor, lost, vile, guilty sinners. But today we can have salvation through believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Please think of these two questions. I want to ask them to you again, because we might never meet in this life another time. This is your opportunity. Please ask yourself, make it personal today, for how long shall my journey be, and when will I return? Thank you very, very much for listening to the message today, and we'll have a short word of prayer, and our service is over. Father, we thank Thee for the gospel message told out another time. The journey of life is serious for us all, and it will end very soon. And we trust that all who are listening today, when life terminates, will be in heaven forevermore to exalt in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless every family that are represented and remember us as we part one from the other and give thanks in his worthy name. Amen.